Compared to other European cities, Berlin, less than 800 years old, is considered a young city, yet without a doubt its fairly short history makes it unique. Berlin is a city of social and architectural experimentation, starting with Prussia's famous master builders and continuing to the modern era and the architects who worked here after the wall came down. Even though the destruction of war and many years as a divided city meant that Berlin had the unique opportunity after the wall came down to completely redesign entire neighborhoods and building ensembles in central city districts, architecturally exciting projects have also been implemented at different locations as solitary urban jewels. The best way to explore Berlin's unique atmosphere is from the inside, whether on foot or by bike, getting to know the city by winding through its lively streets and squares. The exciting metropolis is surrounded by numerous waterways, which traditionally were used to ship goods. Berlin's history is reflected in its architecture, and of all the architectural monuments, the Brandenburg Gate, Berlin's only remaining city gate, is the true symbol of the city. Because it was situated in the no-man's land just behind the wall, it also became symbolic of the division of the city into East and West Berlin. The gate was reopened in 1989, after the wall fell. Commissioned by King Frederick William II of Prussia, this late 18th century sandstone construction has 12 door columns and is modeled on the Propyleum the Acropolis in Athens. On both sides, six door columns support the 11 meter deep transverse beam, dividing the gate into five passageways. The gate stands on Pariser Platz, so named after the French capital was occupied by German troops in 1814. Once Berlin's most elegant square, it was reduced to rubble by Allied bombing during the Second World War. As part of the reconstruction of Pariser Platz after the reunification, stylish new buildings, including hotels and embassies, have been constructed in order to restore the square to its former glory. The Reichstag is the seat of the German Bundestag, or federal government, and, with its new dome, is one of Berlin's foremost attractions. Built beginning in 1884, its colorful past reflects the turbulence of German history since the late 19th century. Already severely damaged by fire before the Second World War, it was bombed by the Allies during the bombing of Berlin in 1945. After the war, the West German capital was transferred to Bonn, and it was only with the reunification that the building was restored and rebuilt. Graffiti from Soviet troops and smoke damage from the bombing have been preserved in the Reichstag's interior, however, as a memory of the war. Its glass dome was designed by the eminent British architect Sir Norman Foster in the early 1990s. At first, the subject of great controversy, the Reichstag has now become one of the city's most popular landmarks. The dome offers a 360-degree panorama over the city of Berlin, as well as allowing the main hall of the parliament to be seen from above. The building was finished in 1999, when it became the new home of the Bundestag. The Reichstag was constructed between 1884 and 1894, following the plan of Paul Wallow, since a representative building was needed to house the parliament of the newly founded German state. After reunification, the German federal government decided to use the building as a parliament once again.
Leading out from the Reichstag is June the 17th Street, which is a continuation of Unter den Linden. The Sile Saule, or Victory Column, with its golden statue depicting victory, is one of the city's most imposing landmarks. Designed by Heinrich Strach in 1864 to commemorate the Prussian victory in the Danish-Prussian War, it is crowned by Friedrich Drake's 8.3 meter high gilded bronze statue of Victoria. A Soviet war memorial can also be found along June the 17th Street. Also known as the Tiergarten Memorial, it was constructed by German workers acting on the orders of the Red Army shortly after the end of World War II. It commemorates the 80,000 Soviet dead who fell during the Battle of Berlin in 1945. Near the river, in the historical neighborhood of Köln, stands Berlin's cathedral. Though Berlin's dome is not a cathedral in the traditional sense, since it was never the seat of a Catholic primate, it was nevertheless the former court church of Prussia's royal family, the Hohenzollern, and was conceived as a Protestant answer to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The dome, like the earlier churches that once stood on the site, is a burial place of the princely house of the Hohenzollern, whose representatives were the princes of Brandenburg, dukes and kings of Prussia, and emperors of the German Empire. The present Baroque structure dates only from 1905, though it stands on the site of several earlier churches. The earliest predecessor of the Berliner Dome was the Chapel of St. Erasmus, which was elevated to the status of collegiate church in 1465. To celebrate the union of Prussia's Lutheran and Reformed communities, the Berliner Dome was renovated in the neoclassical style in 1822 by the Berlin architect Karl Friedrich Schinkel. Construction on the current cathedral began in 1894. The dome can be visited daily. Some interesting items in the church's richly decorated interior include the magnificent Sauer's organ, the Elector's tomb, the main altar, which dates from 1850, the neo-baroque pulpit, and the stained glass windows designed by Anton von Werner. A city of the arts can be found in the heart of Berlin on the island in the Spree River. The Consortium of Museums found on Museum Island forms a unique cultural center which unites five important museum buildings into a heterogeneous but harmonic ensemble on the Spree River. To the north stands the Alta Nacional Galleria, the old national gallery. On the southern part of the island we find the Alte Museum, or Old Museum, with the greenery of the Lustgarten stretching out in front of it. The rectangular shaped building encloses two generous courtyards, as well as a two-story centrally located rotunda, based on the design of the Pantheon in Rome. The palaces and gardens of Berlin and the province of Brandenburg bear witness to the artistic, cultural, and architectural history of the region. For 300 years, the Potsdam Berlin Havel landscape, with its many lakes and forests, was a preferred site for the new residences, gardens, and parks of the electors, kings, and emperors of the Hohenzollern dynasty. The stately Chinese house in the Deer Garden of San Susi Park is an impressive example of the widespread fashion and fascination with China, which influenced the cultural tastes of Europe's royal courts in the 18th century. The pavilion's exterior aspect is characterized by life-sized gilded figures that are placed singularly or in groups around the building. A windmill has stood near San Susi Palace since 1738. The grain windmill at San Susi discontinued operation in the second half of the 19th century, and the building became a silent, if picturesque, monument.
The paintings of King Frederick II, known as Frederick the Great, are presented in splendidly carved and gilded frames in Sanssouci's picture gallery, the oldest remaining royal museum in Germany. Frederick II commissioned the picture gallery as a separate building, near Sanssouci Palace, to accommodate a selection of works from his painting collection. The palaces and spacious parks are replete with the charm and atmosphere of bygone eras. At the western end of the main promenade in Sanssouci Park, known as the Haptale, rises a monumental palace building, the New Palace, whose high timbre, or drummed cupola, is recognizable from a great distance. This colossal architectural complex clearly served an official, representative function, in sharp contrast to the intimate, or rather modest, vineyard palace. The new palace was the last palace built by Frederick the Great in this park. Its opulence and grandeur served as a clear reminder of the continuing power of the Prussian state after years of deprivation caused by the Seven Years' War. Frederick himself rarely stayed at the palace, and it was later used predominantly as guest apartments and for festivities. It was not until the reign of Wilhelm II, Germany's last emperor, that the new palace became the main royal residence. While Frederic and Rococo was established at Sanssouci, Frederick the Great had the new palace built in varying forms of Baroque architecture and decoration, with some deviations. The king preferred Rococo and Baroque to the classicism that was already taking hold of Europe at that time, reflecting the preference of many monarchs. Architect Johann Gottfried Böhring, with the aid of Heinrich Ludwig Menger, was assigned the task of planning the new palace and had already demonstrated success with the completion of the Chinese tea house and the picture gallery in the Sanssouci Royal Park. Additionally, the north and south auxiliary wings were crowned with domes surmounted by gilded eagles. Between the pilasters, what appears to be brick is actually a painted effect, leaving only the south wing with exposed brick. Sanssouci, without a worry, was the French name of his palace, though thanks to considerable care taken by its architect, Georg Wenzelos von Nobelsdorf, craftsmen and artisans, it is hailed as Germany's Versailles. Opposite the palace's westward opening court of honor are the commons, designed by Carl von Gotthard and Jean-Laurent Leguay. Styled in the same manner as the palace itself, the two buildings house the royal kitchens, utilities, gardener's shops, palace guards, and servants. Between the two buildings stretches a curved colonnade, decorated with statuary and obelisks which acted as a state entrance as well as a screen to shield the view of the marshlands beyond. In 1896, Wilhelm II had an underground tunnel constructed to allow passage between the palace and the commons in order to avoid inclement weather. No other palace is more closely connected with the personality of Frederick the Great than Sanssouci. The name Sanssouci, without a care, 
should be understood as the aspiration and leitmotif of the king, because it is here that he preferred to withdraw from the world to spend time with his dogs. In the end, Frederick the Great's summer residence was both a favorite place and an important sanctuary for him in difficult times. The architect von Nobelsdorf implemented royal plans in constructing a new palace in the country. The result was a one-story building with a cupola over the oval marble hall and the vestibule in the center, and only four rooms on each side. The southern facade is decorated with 36 sandstone sculptures between the tall ground floor windows. The secondary side wings on the garden front are screened by two symmetrical rows of trees, each terminating in free-standing trellis gazebos, richly decorated with gilded ornaments. The two service wings, virtually hidden from sight by foliage in the time of Frederick the Great, were remodeled in the 19th century by Frederick William IV, who transformed the palace into a more conventional royal residence for family and court use. The northern entrance with its semicircular cour d'honneur was created using two segmented Corinthian colonnades. Columns and projecting pediments provide a stronger modeling than the main building, with its respective pattern of alternating windows and pilasters. The ensemble, a memorable example of Baroque style, provides a grandiose architectural backdrop. Returning to Berlin, the visit continues in the Tiergarten Park, Berlin's largest park and a popular outdoor oasis for the city's residents. It originally served as hunting grounds for the Prussian princes until it was made into a park in the 18th century. Beginning in 1818, the landscape architect Peter Joseph Lenné laid out the site in the English landscape style. Statuary was added in 1850. The English style became fashionable in the early 19th century in the original designs by prominent landscape architect Peter Joseph Lenné have been preserved to this day. Lenné was commissioned to transform the green area into a landscaped park and the zoological garden on the southwestern edge of the Tiergarten was opened in 1844. The Tiergarten, or Animal Park, and former hunting ground is Berlin's best known park. Because of its centrality, it's a favorite with locals and visitors alike, and over the years has remained a wonderful place for a stroll, a breath of fresh air, a picnic, cycling, jogging, or just kicking a ball around. Schloss Bellevue is now the official residence of the federal president in Berlin. The elongated main building is flanked by side wings, on the left the ladies wing, on the right the spree wing. The two-story main building's elaborate design contrasts with the completely plain, three-storied side wings. On its gables are sandstone figures depicting agriculture, fishing and hunting. Berlin's magnificent boulevard, the centerpiece of Old Berlin, leads from Pariser Platz to the Brandenburg Gate to the Schlossbrücke Bridge. Unter den Linden was originally a bridle path. From 1573 it led from Berlin Palace to Lietzau, later Charlottenburg, and then on to Spandau. From 1701 the Linden was increasingly developed, thus mirroring the rising splendor of the monarchy and the new architectural style.
Duke Friedrich Wilhelm, also known as the Great Elector, was dedicated to the development and beautification of Berlin during his reign in the mid-1600s. It is said that in order to spruce up the route from his castle home to the Tiergarten hunting ground, Friedrich ordered the planting of long rows of linden trees, which would also serve to keep the route more shady and comfortable for his travels. That means his carriage ride would have him traveling unter den Linden, literally under the lindens. On the Unter den Linden, Berlin's new cosmopolitan atmosphere is readily apparent. Austere state-run enterprises have been replaced by embassies, galleries, and expensive shops showing off a variety of the latest merchandise. Though much of the street has changed over the centuries, one statue still standing today is the impressive equestrian statue of Friedrich II. After Prussia's victory over Napoleon in 1814, the street was rebuilt with large new buildings, including the neoclassical Neue Wache, which served as the guardhouse for the Royal Guards and is now the national memorial to the victims of war and tyranny. Nearly a century later, Friedrich II expanded the boulevard by adding his collection of cultural buildings to the area, including the Berlin State Opera House and the State Library. In 1701, the library was renamed the Royal Library at Berlin and kept this name until the end of the German monarchy in 1918. The Zoikhaus, or Armory, which today houses the German Historical Museum, is Berlin's largest remaining structure. The museum aims to provide enlightenment and communication regarding the common history shared by Germans and other Europeans to the present day. Alexander Platz is Berlin's most famous square and perfectly expresses the city's very urban charm. Originally, this square lay just beyond the gates to the city and around the turn of the 18th century served as the city's livestock market. It was later used as a wool market, as well as a parade ground. The square got its current name on the occasion of the visit of Tsar Alexander I in 1805. Its present appearance dates from the construction of the East German city center. The Fernsee term, or TV tower, dominates the square. The Alexanderplatz was the center of the city in the Middle Ages, and since the reunification of East and West Berlin, the large square is primed to once again become the heart of Berlin. Checkpoint Charlie is one of the most symbolic memorials of the divided city. The subject of numerous legends and spy stories, the former border crossing point between East and West Berlin was the place where Soviet and American tanks stood face to face after the construction of the wall in 1961. The museum How Some Checkpoint Charlie recounts the history of the wall. Though the west side of the Berlin Wall was once a popular meeting point for graffiti sprayers, nowadays many famous graffiti artists have left their mark on the east side of the longest preserved section of the wall. 118 artists from 21 countries have painted pictures on a 1,316 meter long section of the Berlin Wall, which is now a listed landmark. The Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe is Berlin's central monument for remembering the Jewish victims of the Holocaust. Situated in Berlin city center, the memorial stands near the Reichstag and the Brandenburg Gate. The internationally renowned New York architect Peter Eisenman designed a field of stele 
2,711 concrete blocks of different heights, structured in a grid pattern and covering nearly 19,000 square meters of gently sloping ground. Berlin's constantly evolving and truly unique history is one of the reasons that have made it one of Europe's most vibrant, exciting and colorful capitals. <laughs>